Hey friends, welcome to your Thursday edition of Hot News. Today was supposed to be the launch of Cyberpunk 2077. You know, the second delay, third delay. I don't even remember, but we're not getting until December. Uh, just a couple housekeeping notes before we jump on into the news. The big thing is that Reese and Catlin are no longer here with us. They are gone in South Africa now, and it's just gonna be me here. So that's, you get that. But we're gonna be talking about today that you might be able to get your RX 6000 series GPUs. You might just have to hold on for a little bit. We're also gonna talk about how you might be able to get your hands on a PlayStation 5 and the fact that Apple may have given in to some of Epic games requests, but not all of it. Let's get into that after we talk about today's video sponsor. My friends, today's video is brought to you by Keeps. Now, I don't know if you know this, but two out of three guys will experience some form of hair loss by the time they hit 35. It's something that's on the top of my mind now that I've just passed the 30 threshold, and it's something that I want to prevent. And the best way to prevent hair loss is to getting on top of it before it happens, which is where it keeps coming. You used to have to go to a doctor's office and get a prescription. Now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online and get hair loss medication delivered right to your home, and they'll deliver it to you every 90 days. So no more scheduling an appointment with your doctor, feeling a little awkward about it and picking up your medication at the pharmacy straight to your door. And they offer generic versions of the only two FDA approved hair loss products out there. And you may have tried them before, but never at the price that Keeps is offering you. Keeps treatments actually take about four to six months before you start seeing results. So the key is to act fast. And if you're ready to take action and prevent your hair loss, you can go to keeps.com forward slash UFD, which is linked in the video description to receive 50% off your first order. That's keeps.com forward slash UFD to save 50% off your first order with them. It's a great deal. So first up, with regards to the RX 6000 series GPUs that launched yesterday, reviews generally seem to be favorable for the cards in regular gaming scenarios. But a lot of people noted that they weren't able to get their hands on a card. However, Kyle Bennett from Hard OCP on the forum said that from what he knows behind the scenes, AMD front loaded the bad supply. But next week when AI B partners are actually going to come out with their cards is when we're going to see five to seven times the inventory release than what NVIDIA has shipped. So they've heavily backloaded into the channel. So all of that should mean that next week is the more real launch of the AMD RX 6000 cards. However, he does go on to say that there is no way that when AMD was doing its projections for supplies that they realized that NVIDIA would have crapped the bed so hard and there would be this giant ballooning market for higher end cards because Nvidia hasn't been able to meet demand. So while the cards might be shipping in five to seven times the volume next week, they likely won't be able to deal with all of the pent up demand from Nvidia screwing over basically every gamer who wanted to get their hands on one. So that's the general idea. According to Kyle Bennett, we'll have to see if this indeed does ever play out. We have to just give it a week when we get new partner cards such as this, like the Red Devil from Power Color or Sapphire or any number of of other card manufacturers that are gonna come out with their custom ones. However, in case you had trouble getting your hands on an RX 6000 series GPUs, don't you worry. Frank Azor, who's, you know, chief of marketing over at AMD Radeon, uh, decided that he should buy one and take it from, you know, a regular gamer who wanted one. I guess this was his way of showing that it wasn't a paper launch because he was able to purchase one, but based on what I'm hearing on the internet, a lot of people weren't able to get their hands on one. This comes across as a little tone deaf. He says that the intent behind this was to show that everything's working. It wasn't to show that he was getting special treatment, which he likely wouldn't, but you gotta ask the question, why do you not have one? Did AME not ship you one? Does your company where you're the chief architect of gaming solutions and marketing not provide you with a card that you're actually trying to market? Like there's just a bunch of questions that come into here. Jay's two cents and Gamers Nexus chiming in saying, wow, even AMD wouldn't give you one A. And then Gamers Nexus saying, then he wouldn't be able to tell everyone, look, there is stock. I told you so. What do you think of this? What do you think of the chief marketing guy at AMD kind of just throwing it in everybody's face that he was able to get one, which number one means that he took one from a normal gamer. But then two, trying to prove the fact that he doesn't have to pay the $10 because it wasn't a paper launch because look, I was able to buy one. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I wasn't able to buy one because I was taking a recent cat and went to the airport, so I wasn't able to sit around the computer. But AMD set some overclocking records yesterday with the 6800 XT setting a world record on air cooling, which is crazy. The cards are wickedly fast in normal rasterization scenarios. And on top of that, EK rolled out some new coolers for both the Ryzen 5000 series CPUs as well as the new RX 6000 GPUs. You can see here custom AMD water cooling for those. And in case you want to 
read or watch any reviews from anybody else who did RX 6000 reviews. I always leave a link to Video Cards, who does a roundup of literally everybody that you could want from both written and visual reviews. It's all there. Check it out at the link in the video description. Now let's move on over to the fact that NVIDIA has said that they should have something similar to AMD Smart Access Memory, which from the reviews that I watched, it makes a slight difference, but also doesn't in some games. So it's really not that big of a technology, but it's more of an open source technology that they're going to be using that NVIDIA will even be able to take advantage of regardless of the fact that you're not on Ryzen 5000. AMD is not the only one who had a big launch this week. Apple's M1 Max reviews have come out and they look Oh, just so sweet. They perform incredibly well. They beat basically any Intel chip that's on the market and they do it at a performance efficiency that allows them to get tremendous battery life and app support is coming. Even for games that haven't been developed to natively run on ARM, just on the emulator from x86 to ARM runs just as fast as it would on any other MacBook, which just means that Apple's coming in and shaking things up. And in case you want to run Windows apps, apparently their crossover 20 showed that they are indeed working on that and getting Windows programs to work on the new M1 Max, including Team Fortress 2, which you're going to be able to play, which obviously is a bit dated, but showing proof of concept is essentially built on Wine, and therefore even the M1 Max are going to be able to use Windows because Boot Camp actually got stripped with the new M1 Max, which is a little disappointing. But now let's talk about the big change that Apple announced yesterday, that they're going to be changing the commission structure for app stores. If you make less than a million dollars in sales, you have to pay 15%, which is less than the 30% that they were charging. This obviously isn't what Epic Games is going for. Or they wanted to have less, but this is a big win for indie app developers who aren't able to make that million dollars in sales. They have to pay significantly less. However, in this press report, it says that once you cross over a million dollars, you start paying the 30%, which doesn't make sense because then that means you would make less money on a million than you would on 999,000. Hopefully it, this gets clarified by Apple and then it's actually after a million, all of that's at 30% because you would then incentivize people not to make a million dollars. You would make more money off of $999,999 in sales than you would up until $1.21 million in sales. So hopefully that gets restructured, but a big win for indie app developers, maybe not exactly what Epic Games was going for with stripping Fortnite, but Apple at least changing the scene to some extent, but they might need extra money flowing in because they're paying more money for Battery Gate, $113 million lawsuit that they're settling. On top the $500 million that they settled back in March. So that's not looking too pretty for Apple paying out for that. And hopefully we don't have to deal with any battery gate in folding phones that are allegedly coming to iPhone in 2022. Obviously, after the tech has matured and developed, that's when Apple comes out and says, we did it and we did it best. And now it's real, just like 5G, even though tons of Android phones have it, even though T-Mobile rolled it out nationwide. Now it's real with the iPhone. But with increased competition from AMD and Apple, Intel is looking to continue to shed some of its business is they're selling off its power management chip business and it's going out for $85 million to MediaTek. Intel just not looking good, but also shedding excess fat that they may not need during these times. Now let's talk about how you can maybe get your hands on a PS5. Allegedly, according to Walmart themselves, you'll be able to get a chance in about an hour at 3 p.m. Eastern on November 19th. They're gonna have more PS5s and Xbox Series X available in stock online. So just giving you a quick heads up, you could head out over to Walmart's website and maybe try to pick one up. Now let's go ahead and talk about Stadia for a second because today is the year anniversary of Stadia just in case you do woo in case you didn't remember, then they're getting desperate. Now YouTube Premium members are getting Stadia Premier Edition, which is a $100 bundle, including the Chromecast Ultra for free. Just trying to get it this into the hands of everybody. Wow, this is ridiculous. And apparently they're doubling down. Stadia Games and Entertainment seeking games to launch in 2023 and beyond. They're saying we're not gonna be killed off like every other Google app. And I just don't see that happening. I'm pretty sure the big launch that Stadia was betting on was supposed to be Cyberpunk. And that was supposed to bring people into their platform. Look, you can play a AAA game on our platform and it's it's just gonna run flawlessly. And that was supposed to happen back in April. And it, yeah, there you go. Well, speaking of streaming services, Wonder Woman 1984 is gonna be rolling out on HBO Max December 25th. And you don't have to pay an extra fee if you are an HBO Max subscriber. This and Justice League Snyder Cut Edition are 
some big pushes for HBO Max, which might get a lot of people to sign up for it. But it's also one of the big blockbusters that was supposed to come out this year that's seeing an exclusively digital release, which is intriguing and they're doing it during a holiday where everybody can actually sit at home and watch it. I kind of like this move and a lot of people kind of like Among Us and they announced and showed off a new game map that should be coming and saying that they're going to have more details at the Game Awards on December 10th. There you go. They launched their new Twitter as well as teasing more stuff that's going on there. And in case you're not convinced that video games are the future, apparently this season's Pro Bowl for the NFL will be taking place virtually in Madden NFL 21. It'll be a week long event where streamers, celebrities, and current and former NFL players use the Pro Bowl rosters to play against each other. I don't know, it's a little weird, man. I mean, you're kind of having a full season already. Is it really such a big deal to have an extra game. I guess the idea of the Pro Bowl is that everybody's going on location and like having fun at a new place and that it's kind of like an event for the family. You don't want to do that during a pandemic. It's a little sus though. What's not sus is Assassin's Creed sales. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is the best selling AC game in history, according to Ubisoft, as well as releasing other statistics such as 4 million kilometers traveled. Probably doesn't hurt that it launched at the same time as a new console generation. So everybody's ready for video games. Now let's talk about the game that we keep talking about this episode. Cyberpunk 2077 got some leaked images showing that it's gonna be a two Blu-ray disc game coming in at 70 gigabytes, obviously not as big as Red Dead Redemption 2's 100 five gigabytes, but it's going to take two Blu-ray discs if you're on the PS4. Whew, that's a big boy. And that's going to wrap it up for this episode of Hot News Solo Edition. Brett by himself in his room with nobody else around to help him. I'm not going crazy. Why don't we talk about today's video sponsor to help me get over the sadness that is recent Catlin being gone. Don't forget that today's video is sponsored by Keeps. Check them out. The link in the video description, keeps.com forward slash UFD to save 50% off your first order with them. Big thanks to Keep for sponsoring. And that's going to be the end of this episode. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. I'll check you in the next video. Cheers. Cheers.